hope that uh, the broadcast is not interrupted, but if for some reason we, we lose signal or something during the, during the time, if you go over, our mainstream is on Vimeo, and so uh, you can go over to Vimeo and, and make sure that the, the stream hopefully is not interrupted on, on that mainstream. So uh, if you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube, uh, hopefully you can join us on Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O dot com. All right. Um, we're going to begin with just uh, some announcements. Before we do, though, I, I, I do want to share with you, as a church, we're all about advancing the kingdom of God. And so uh, in the middle of service, you might hear a doorbell ring. That's okay. Uh, that's because we have a, a Myanmar Community Church that's meeting upstairs right now. And, and after this service, we have the uh, Casa de Oriacion that will meet as well. Uh, so just bear with us as we continue to roll through. So, uh, Sean, you're going to share with us a few announcements that are going to be happening. What's happening this week? First up for our announcements, we've got the communication card. This is for everyone, guests, members, attendees. If you're a guest with us, we'd love to have that record of your attendance and uh, be able to reach out to you either by phone or by email during the week. Um, if you're a member with us and you have a change of address, phone number, email, you can get those on there so that Nancy can update the uh, directory as needed. Any prayer requests you have that you'd like either the church to pray for as a whole or uh, the church... Um, staff to pray for, you can designate those on there as such, uh, or any decisions, reactions, or questions you have from the service today, or any hymn or song requests you have for Jerry, you can put those on there as well. If you're a guest with us and you'd like to get in contact us and with us in other ways, you can email us at livinggracebap at gmail.com. Uh, you can also call us on the phone, 970-330-0786, and of course you can send us mail through the post office as well. Uh, you can also visit our website at livinggracebaptist.org, and you'll find on there the communication card link as well as a prayer request button and donation button on there as well. Panera Pickup uh, this week, May 25th, will be the Nettles, and then next week, June 8th, yeah, uh, but uh, June 1st, next week, will be the Benjamins. Sorry, I had to do some math in my head there. Lawn care schedule uh, this week, uh, for the week uh, leading up to May 29th, will be Casa de Oracion. Uh, next week, the week leading up to June 5th, will be John and Asher Benjamin. Uh, the following week after that, June 12th, will be Ed Musil, Josiah Vasquez, and Manuel Moreno. And uh, June 19th is the Hellfighters. Sunday mornings, we are doing our prayer around the pulpit. If you would like to join for that, uh, we meet at 9 a.m. before the Sunday school uh, service hour. Uh, join us for that uh, and be praying for not only Pastor John here, but also the churches around Greeley, around Colorado, around the country, and around the world that the gospel is getting out each and every Sunday morning. Celebrate Recovery. Uh, Celebrate Recovery's new schedule, uh, beginning June 5th, they will be meeting every Saturday now. Uh, they will have their uh, hybrid on Saturday's general meeting at 6 p.m. And then the men's open, and sh uh, men's open share and women's open shares will meet following that at 7 p.m. And then the Monday's um, step study for both men and women will meet at 6 p.m. hybrid as well for that. The baby bottle campaign is underway. Uh, it started on Mother's Day, and it goes until Father's Day. Uh, do we still have some uh, bottles to pick up out? Yes? Okay. So if you'd like to pick up a bottle, we've got them here uh, at the church. You can pick them up, uh, get them filled with uh, any loose change you have, dollar bills, whatever you want to uh, put in there, and bring it back to the church by Father's Day. All of that will go to uh, supporting the Resource Center here in Greeley. WISP uh, is going to be having a brunch on May 26th at 9.30 a.m. So any women who want to join for that, it's at 9.30 on May 26th. Uh, Dr. Phil Young is going to be having a nutrition seminar on May 28th at 6.30 p.m. here at the church. And then May 29th, uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, we are doing a car show here at the church. I believe we have 
A uh, few people who've called uh, interested in showing off their car here, so we'll have a lot of fun cars to see. Um, we'll have uh, food, music, uh, think some fun out here, fellowship together. Um, we're going to have hot dogs. I think there's nachos, there's snow cones, there's popcorn, lots of fun things to eat. Uh, and uh, come at 10 any time between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. to join in on that. Uh, Women and Little Kids Ministry is meeting on June 3rd at 6.30 p.m. until 7.30 p.m. And then June 6th, we will be having a joint service with Remnants. Uh, that is uh, not this next week, but the following week after that. And then our VBS for 2021 is going to be the Rocky Railway. It is July 19th through the 23rd. Uh, we are still in need of some teachers and leaders and helpers uh, all over the place for that. If you'd like to join that, uh, let Annie Pantier know. You can uh, email her or call her on the phone or text her. Let her know you want to join. The theme is Rocky Railway for that. If anyone needs a sermon DVD or CD, let Nancy know so that we can get those uh, out to you. We are preparing those uh, each week, Sunday afternoon, so that they can get sent out throughout the week. Uh, youth game nights. Uh, we are going to have some board games and a Sunday bar on June 5th uh, from 3 to 6 here at the church. Uh, so if you're a part of the youth or just young at heart and want to join in, play some games, uh, we're just going to have a board game and uh, have a Sunday bar uh, just to kind of uh, have some fun and enjoy the day together. And then for the youth ministry, we are meeting uh, Sunday mornings at 9.30 for our Sunday morning live Bible study. And then we are doing our dive-in Bible study on Wednesday nights. Uh, we are doing it 5 p.m. for food and fellowship. And then 6.30 p.m. is the Bible study that starts. And if you need a ride uh, or anything or just need information, you can give me a call, 970-515-3966. And then for our May birthdays, uh, May 22nd was uh, Connie Quintana, and then May 23rd is Holly Pyatt, uh, May 27th, Joy Robinette, and then May 30th is Valerie Benjamin. And then uh, we want to thank everyone who came out yesterday to help uh, with the work day. There they are uh, working in the prayer garden out front. They're getting a whole bunch of trees trimmed and uh, and uh, making it look a lot nice for the for the summer or for the spring months summer months here, and that's it. Prayer garden looks amazing out there. I think I think a lot of people that helped out with yesterday's uh, time. So thank you for everyone uh, helping. Uh, Psalm forty six ten says. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. And we're going to exalt him today. Would you join me in praying? Uh, Father, Lord, we, we desire right now to be still. And in the midst of that stillness, exalt you. Uh, Lord, I pray that this service would lift you on high. And Father, we pray that as we sing, as we open up your word, that you would remove Remove any fog or haze or distraction, anything that would hinder us from worshiping you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, let's stand up, join together as we praise God through song, to God be the glory. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
of blood to every believer the promise of God the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice praise the Lord Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he had taught us, great things he had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater it will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father. Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he hath done you know I was kidding around with the uh, musicians this morning that I might change the words and I'm reading the words as we're singing and this hymn will change the words <laughs> our wonder our what transport is what it used to be but this says victory so I'm like, okay. I grew up singing at Transport. I don't know how Transport and Victory go together, but praise God, they must. Amen? Amen. Let's continue worship with Love Lifted Me. Hymn number 546, if you're looking. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to, to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. There you are. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above completely saves he will lift you by his love out of those angry waves he's the master of the sea billows his will obey he your savior wants to be be saved today love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me sing it out now there you go. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Hey, Amen. I'm so glad it did. Have a seat, please. As Sean was sharing earlier, we are going to be having a, an outreach uh, on Saturday, and we have 
both Linda and Susan that are going to come down with share a little bit about what is happening on Saturday. Okay, so we are having these event stages this summer to try to just reach out to the community and show them that we love them. You know, part of our our mission is to come alongside people, and so this Saturday we're going to have an event, and we're going to have Vanna Black in a minute. Tell us about that. Um, but, <laughs> yes. So I'm going to let her tell you about this. Okay. So it kind of. So if you're listening to Sean's announcement, we're going to have what on Saturday? show. Okay, so we're going to be awarding trophies to the top three cars. So it starts from 10 to 2 p.m. We're going to have lots of fun. We're going to have food and for your music enjoyment, we will have how many of you like the 50s and 60s music? That's, a, that's one of my favorite genre. So we're going to have music for your enjoyment as well. <laughs> We have, like Sean said, hot dogs, popcorn, snow cones, you name it, nachos, come on down. And then for the children, we haven't left you out. We have something special for you guys. How many of you remember the penny drive on Vacation Bible School? Yeah. Anybody? We're going to do the same thing, boys versus girls. We're going to have the bucket out there, boys and girls, listen. And let's see, Asher always makes the boys win. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so adults are welcome too but I wanted to make this special for the children so that they can participate and let's see who brings the most pennies girls or boys and we will be donating those that collection will go to, uh, to support the lighthouse food bank so there'll be fun for everyone so come come on down Great, let's pray for that real quick. Uh, Father, we just lift up that car show to you right now for Saturday. We pray that you would continue to be with that and, and all of the different plans and, and processes to get that organized. We just pray that you would continue to uh, help that ad, uh, not only ad, advance your kingdom, but Lord, that we would see uh, kiddos come out, maybe even sign up for a vacation Bible school and, and get connected into the church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Anybody under 30, under 30, that can tell me what that trophy's made out of, those two things sticking up, I got a lifesaver for you. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, hey, hey, that's not fair. You're not under 30, Woody. All right, let's stand up and join together and sing, I will never be the same again. Can't take some people anywhere. I will never be the same again I can never return I've closed the door I will walk the path and I'll run the race and I will never be the same again I will never be the same again I can never return I've closed the door I will walk the path and I'll run the race and I will never be the same again fall like fire soak like rain flow like mighty waters again and again sweep away darkness burn away the chaff and let a flame burn to glorify your name there are higher heights there are deeper seas whatever you need to do lord do in me the glory of god fills my life same again fall like fire soak like 
like rain, flow like mighty waters again and again. Sweep away the darkness, burn away the chaff, and let a flame burn to glorify your name. I will never be the same I've closed the door. I will walk the path and I'll run the race. And I will never be the same again. No, I will never be the same again. Amen. I'm so glad he has changed us in such a powerful way. Let's slow it down just a little bit as we seek God and we sing Holy Spirit, rain down on us today.
seated, please. Thank you, Cookie, Jerry, Carl. Thank you, guys. Um, we're going to dive into the Word of God, but we, we want to make prayer our engine, not our caboose. I know that the, the kiddos are heading out. As, as they are heading out, I just want to share with you, uh, you know, our, our goal as a church is to continue to advance the, the kingdom of God. And uh, one of my visions is to see 10 churches planted across northern Colorado. I'd love to see the gospel just penetrate this area for Jesus. And, and one of the kind of one of those earth-shattering statistics is that 91% of northern Colorado are not evangelical Christians. Um, you know, when you think about just the, the lostness that's around us, we need more churches planted uh, just to be able to see the kingdom of God advanced. And so we're going to pray for a number of our, our churches that, that are meeting, going to be meeting today. We've got the well that's meeting over at our other facility right now, and, and as well, um, the other church that's going to be meeting right after the well is uh, Remnant, and we're going to lift them up in prayer this morning too. Would you join me in praying? Uh, Lord, uh, today, Lord, we just, we just want to give you praise. You are so worthy of all of our praise. Uh, Lord, I I pray for for this area, uh, for northern Colorado, Lord, in particular. Lord, we need you. Uh, We need an outpouring of your spirit. Uh, Lord, I pray for for this area in particular that we'd see uh, such an outpouring of your spirit that we would be able to see people coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ day by day. Uh, just like what happened in Acts, Lord, uh, people, people being added to the kingdom day by day. And Lord, we, we want to lift up the churches that are meeting today, the well and uh, Myanmar Community Church is meeting upstairs. And Lord, we lift up Casa de Oriacion and, and Remnant that are going to be meeting later today. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to uh, use those churches to advance your kingdom. Uh, also, Lord, I, I think of uh, Casa del Rey down in Fort Lupton that's meeting, and, and I think of our brother Shorty and the Cal- Kersey Cowboy Church, Lord, I pray that you would use each one of them today to continue to advance your kingdom. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd be with us today. Uh, Lord, would you uh, help us right now to, as your children of, uh, the children that you have called us to be, Lord, would you help us to not just be hearers of your word, but be doers? Uh, would you help us to apply this teaching into our lives and help us to be transformed into your image. Uh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak through me now. Help me deliver this message of yours. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God's preservation. Today, uh, I want to say welcome back. First of all, if you are joining us new, thanks for being a part of the Living Grace Baptist Church family. I'm glad that the Lord has brought you to Living Grace Baptist Church, and if you're joining us new, I pray that you feel loved and appreciated and accepted, uh, that you leave this place uh, transformed into His image, into Jesus' image. Uh, I want to just share with you, uh, especially if you're new, our vision and mission statement. Our vision is seeking seekers to become believers who become disciple makers. And the way that we accomplish this is with our our mission statement. And our mission is intentionally coming alongside people to awaken hearts to spiritual growth in Christ. Today, we're here to celebrate our risen Savior. Amen? Amen. As we look forward to another outpouring of the Holy Spirit in what will be an unstoppable rise of a new church age. Uh, Today, we're continuing with our brand new teaching series, and we're looking at three chapters in the book of Matthew. Uh, This Your Bible, probably if you were to open up to Matthew chapter 5, you have little headings, maybe like mine says, little headings, and it says, Jesus gives the Sermon on the Mount. As I shared with you last week, I really don't like like some of the titles that people put at the beginning. Uh, These are added, obviously. Um, And the reason I don't like the Sermon on the Mount is because 
it really doesn't describe what Jesus is doing in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. The Sermon on the Mount would probably be similar to saying the sermon from behind the pulpit or the sermon behind the lectern or the teaching from Living Grace Baptist Church. It, it doesn't really tell you anything, does it? Uh, what Jesus is doing in these three chapters is so important. And what Jesus is doing is he's intentionally taking his disciples aside to teach them about the kingdom of God. Uh, a teaching that would be maybe for true disciples. And so maybe a better title would be the kingdom of God for true disciples. Maybe that would be a better title. Jesus is teaching his disciples on what a disciple of Jesus, I don't know if that was me or not. I'm like, whoo, everybody's awake now. <laughs> Is that me, Sean? Making, making some airwaves? Or, well, wait again. No, okay, maybe not. I don't know. You know, the reason why we can call this, uh, going back for just a moment, because Jesus is teaching his disciples on what discipleship really looks like, we're calling this teaching series Unending Discipleship, Unending. And the reason is, uh, once we become a follower of Jesus Christ, we've only just begun. We've begun a process of discipleship. Now, Christian discipleship is defined as the state of being a follower of Jesus by applying his teaching and precepts into our lives. And this ongoing process of discipleship begins the moment that we not only trust in Jesus Christ, um, but it is this unending process. Meaning that the moment you think that you've arrived, the moment you've become a follower, a, a, a complete disciple, usually that's the moment that God shows up and humbles you, and then you realize, well, there's a lot that I still need to learn about this discipleship process. Being a disciple of Jesus actually means examining his teachings, his principles, um, acting and conducting ourselves according to those teachings. And this process of discipleship is really an ongoing commitment that requires a lifetime to accomplish. As I said uh, a moment ago, being a disciple of Jesus begins the moment that you trust into Jesus Christ. And so before we go any further with this teaching, since this is designed for disciples, for those who have trusted in Jesus, I need to ask, when did you trust in Jesus Christ? for the forgiveness of your sins. When did you begin a relationship with him that lasts forever? If you've never trusted in Jesus Christ and began, began that process, I wanna pause for a moment and give you the opportunity to do that today. Uh, we actually call this the gospel, which means just simply good news. And the gospel is this, that God created us all to be in a relationship with him. But our sins separate us from God. And those sins cannot be removed by our good deeds. So paying the price for sin, Jesus came, died on the cross for our sins, and rose again from the grave, proving he is God, so that he is everyone. Everyone who trusts in Jesus and him alone has eternal life. And L is life. Life with Jesus, it starts now, and it lasts forever. If that made sense for the first time, Right now, you can pray silently in your heart, trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, begin that relationship that lasts forever. And if you, if you do that, if you could go on to our website at livinggracebaptist.org, fill out one of the communication cards, and I would love to send a resource to you called Now Grow, uh, seven questions that typically come up for believers who have just trusted in Christ so they can kind of grow in that walk with Christ. Now, once we've trusted in Jesus, Jesus actually tells us that we receive a helper. The helper is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in our lives. But as we found out last week, the reason why we need that helper is because we also face persecution, because we're different. Last week, when we examined the, the first 12 verses of Matthew chapter 5, we realized that we are different. Once we've trusted in Jesus Christ, we're transformed. We're no longer the same. We're on display for the world to see. 
and we're delighted with a reward that we're going to one day receive. One of the things that Jesus quickly points out in this first teaching is that we are going to be persecuted. That doesn't sound like fun. Uh, John 3, 19 through 20 says this. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light and fear that their deeds will be exposed. Now that light that's come into the world is Jesus, Jesus Christ. This passage gives us an insight as to why we as disciples of Jesus Christ throughout history have been persecuted for our faith. It begins by saying that the light, Jesus, came into this world, and of course we, we know that Jesus Christ transforms this world, but it also says that evil hates the light. Did you get that? Evil hates the light. Today, we're going to be looking at this topic of light as well as the topic of, of salt. But thinking about this idea of light, I'd like to pause and do a quick pair share. Awkward is awesome, as they say. If you have a person next to you or maybe in front or behind you, I'd like for you to pair share. For those that are online, you can start typing in the chat box. In just a moment, you can discuss this, this little pair share. What is the darkest place you've been in? Or where's the brightest place that you've been? With words, share now, go. Darkest place or brightest place? As you're, as you're finishing up some of those uh, conversations, I, I want you to think back to one of those, maybe when you were younger and one of those first snowstorms that you've probably had, and it was really nice and bright outside, and then you go inside and you can't see anything. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, those are great times. Anybody want to share maybe the brightest or darkest place? Yeah, right over there. Um, I have to say, my, I'm going to share my brightest. Brightest, my okay. Brightest, I have to say it's kind of awful. Because I watch my children share my grandchildren raising them, knowing Jesus. Oh, wow. And the church family. I have to say that is my brightest. Brightest is actually seeing family, discipling family. Oh, that's a good answer. I love that. That's great, Shelly. Thank you for sharing that. Connie, I see your hand. Yeah. My brightest day was when I got baptized. Brightest day getting baptized. Amen. That's great. I love that answer. That's great. Right over there. Yeah. My brightest day was the first day we started preaching. I gave myself to God. Well, praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you for that, Barbie. And, and I appreciate being able to preach here. It's, it's a blessing for sure, this church. Yes, right there. Oh, 1981. She says, I do. Yes, that's great. I love that. You just got some kudo points right there, Bart. That was good. I love that. That, that was a great answer. Good. Others? Did I see a hand over? Maybe I thought. Maybe people are just like, okay, right over there.
Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Luis, where was that at? In Alabama. De, okay, DeSoto De in, in Alabama, in the darkest place. But then once those lights went out, then they started reading Genesis. Stars. Oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's neat. Thank you for sharing that. That is cool. Dave, way back there. Yeah. Yes. Being shot, lived through it. That was one of the darkest times or one of the or was that one of the li- the best times maybe living. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Yeah. Alive. Amen. 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 And, and I know from that experience, you trusted in Christ as well, which has got to be the brightest, right? You know, uh, for those who have trusted in Christ, maybe that's one of your brightest moments as well, right? I, I, die to yourself. That's good. I love that answer, David. That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Good. Anything online? No. People are on, online are like, I don't want to share that brightest or darkest. I, I do recall, though, you know, when you go into like caves and they shut off the lights, it's like, oh, it's dark. Oh, it's, it's really dark, uh, which is why light is so important. You know, we have light today, uh, which is a praise the Lord. Light is something we have to have for life. Uh, Today, we're going to be reading about light, and we're going to be reading about salt. And the teaching that we're going to be doing today is called God's Preservation. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Matthew 5. We're only going to be reading verses 13 through 16, Matthew 5. 13 through 16. I hope you brought your Bible, and, and that way you can make some some underlining, maybe write in some things next to this so that we can go through God's Word together and hide His Word into our hearts. Uh, Matthew 5, follow along with me. Verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, there are three things that I'd like to kind of unpack from this little passage of Scripture. Uh, The first point is found in verse 13. So if you have your own Bible, you can underline the word salt. And if you're a note taker, you have your own notes, the the first point is this, God uses you to preserve the decaying world. The Apostle Paul commands us in Colossians 4, 6, let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. In Matthew 5, verse 13, Jesus uses this metaphor of salt to describe the actions and conversations that we as disciples have with outsiders, those that are not followers of Christ. And what we find out from this analogy is that God uses you, God uses you as salt to season and preserve a dying world. Salt during Jesus' time really served two main purposes. First, salt was used as a flavor for seasoning for food. Second, salt was used for preserving food. In Jesus' day, there were no such things as refrigerators or freezers like today. 
Uh, Salt was used as a method of slowing down the decay of foods, specifically meat. Now, last year for COVID-19, our family actually went out and purchased our very first freezer. (laughs) Can you believe that? Uh, We wanted to purchase more frozen food. Why? Because it was COVID, right? And we had to have more food. You know, back in Jesus' day, salt was the way that they stored their abundance of food. Salt was specifically used as a preservative to keep meat longer. Now, many of the preservatives that we have today come from sodium chloride, which is salt, or sodium mixed with another compound of preserving. Uh, Just as a quick side note, I got to share with you, when I was back in my high school days, I ate so much lettuce that was soaked in sodium phosphate or sodium erythabate that I became allergic to lettuce, or not really lettuce, the chemicals that were used to preserve lettuce from browning. Um, Because of the amazing chemical qualities of salt, scientists have actually modified salt into all these other little compounds uh, that help us to preserve the things that we have today. Now, going back to Matthew 5.13, What Jesus is saying in our passage is that we are pretty important, we have a pretty important purpose. In fact, we as disciples of Jesus have an amazing purpose because our world is dying and decaying. In fact, your purpose first is to cause people to thirst after God. Thirst after God and His righteousness. The second purpose is to preserve this world that is dying and decaying. Jesus says that if you are a disciple of his, then your identity is salt. You are salt. And whatever you do, whatever your occupation is, or whatever you're doing today, you are to be salt to this world. Jesus is relating salt to your actions, the way you talk, the way you do things. In fact, all you have to do is go back to Matthew 1 through 5, the Beatitudes their attitudes. And get this, your behavior, your conversations, you are a story to unbelievers. You are a story to them. When you are seasoning like salt, then people desire to hear the words that come from your mouth. Because your words and your actions actually align. In fact, when your words and your walk are in agreement, then people are drawn to the grace of God that's on your lips. When we are salt, relationships actually become more authentic. And as we share the good news of Jesus Christ in those relationships, people come to Christ. Guess what? When they come to Christ, then they're preserved. They are preserved from this dying world because now they have an eternal home. The second point, if you're a note taker, is found in verses 14 and 15. If you have your own Bible, the next word to underline is the word light. If you are a note taker, the second point is this. God uses you to provide light to a dark world. God uses you to provide light to a dark world. In verse 14 and 15, Jesus actually uses this metaphor now of light to describe us as disciples. The metaphor that Jesus is using is that you are light in a very dark world. The Greek word for light here in verse 14 and 15 is the word phos, P-H-O-S. It's G-5457 in the Strong's Concordance. If ever you want to just get on your computer and just type in G-5457, you can see all the times it's used. But phos means this. It means to, to shine. It means to illuminate. It also means fire. Wow, I hope you have a little fire in your soul today. It means luminous. In this passage, we we as believers are depicted as little fires, little lights in a dark world. Just as the moon has no light on its own but reflects the light of the sun, so you as believers reflect the light of Jesus so that people who see you see Jesus. The light becomes evident to others who are walking in darkness. 
When we have the Holy Spirit inside of our lives, we become a reflection of Jesus Christ. We also become a light to the world. And I guarantee you, this world is pretty dark and it's lost, which is why we need more light. Speaking of this idea of light, in, in the Gospel of John, chapters, chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, the Apostle John actually starts off this gospel using these words. He says, in him, in Jesus, was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus came, lived on this dark world, but guess what? The light still shines. In fact, the Apostle John is writing these words after Jesus Christ had died. You might say, well, didn't darkness overcome him? No. We know that darkness didn't overcome him because three days later, he rose from the grave. The Apostle John goes on to say that darkness has not overcome it, him because three days after Jesus died on the cross, he rose. And because of that, we who are followers of Jesus Christ we're going to say, receive this same type of blessing. Our physical bodies will one day be resurrected just, just as Jesus Christ was resurrected. In the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 12, verse 12, Jesus says this, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You know, physical light, it is necessary for physical life. The earth would be completely different if there were no longer any sunlight. We did a science experiment as homeschoolers this year, uh, putting a little plant into a box with a little cutout. And you know what's amazing is that little plant that was inside that box started growing right outside of that box, right where that window was. Plants would not be able to grow without sunlight. In the same way, our kitchen, we have plants that are growing crazy in our kitchen today. Some of, those, some of those things are growing right towards that window. In the same way, spiritual light is necessary for spiritual life. Let me repeat that. Spiritual light is necessary for spiritual life. Spiritual light can be a good test of a disciple of Jesus Christ. In fact, if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ and you tend to move towards spiritual things, let me just describe some of those things. Moving towards church gatherings, towards fellowship, towards prayer, towards reading your Bible, towards discipleship, towards evangelism. If you're moving towards those things, you're drawn to it, that means you're probably a disciple of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 42, 6 says this, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. You are a light, a reflection of the light, a light to the nations. God has called you to be that today. The emphasis on Matthew 5, 14 through 16 is maintaining this credible and obvious witness in a dark, dark world. We are to show ourselves as faithful. We are to show ourselves as trustworthy, sincere, and honest in the things that we do. And the moment we do that, the world notices. Also, we have to be ready to give an account. We have to be ready to give an account for the hope that is actually found in us, this little fire that's in us. 1 Peter 3.15 says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that, is in, that, that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. When we continue to reflect Christ's light and give an account for the hope that is in us, 
then those who are unsaved have the chance to move from darkness into light as well. Which brings us to our third point, our last point. It's found in verse 16. If you have your own Bible, you can underline the words good deeds and glorify. Good deeds and glorify. Uh, The third point is this. God uses your good deeds to propel His glory. God uses your good deeds to propel His glory. God has purposed your life to have good deeds, to reflect God's glory and His goodness. The way Ephesians put this, the way the Apostle Paul puts this in Ephesians 2.10, he puts your good works like this. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. When Jesus was actually walking on the earth, he used his good deeds to reveal his glory to people around him, including his disciples. His disciples became disciples because God revealed himself to them. John 2.11 says this, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which He revealed His glory, and His disciples believed in Him. Did you get that? When Jesus Christ spoke to the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, it was Jesus' glory that literally knocked him off the donkey as he was going. The more I study God's glory, the more I'm convinced that God's glory is almost undefinable. God's glory far exceeds anything that we can comprehend with our limited minds. In fact, God's glory always has an impact on the world and His creation. Psalm 19.1 puts God's glory this way, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of His hands. Psalm 29.9 goes on to say, The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare, and in His temple all cry glory. God's glory does not just reflect Him. It's part of who Jesus is. Jesus actually makes Himself known through our good deeds that continue to reveal Jesus is glory. That's mind-blowing to me. John 1.14 says this, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Get this. God's glory is part of who Jesus is. Just like His grace, just like His truth, good deeds, good deeds which are done in faith through the power of the Holy Spirit, we often think, well, they propel other people to come to Jesus Christ, and that's true among creation, but those good deeds actually reveal God's glory in our own lives as well. Get this, the moment we do those good deeds, we are brought closer and closer to Christ because of our obedience, because God is the glory. You see, the glory of God, it exceeds anything you can understand in our finite minds. It's through good deeds that we can encounter the glory of God more and more in our lives. As disciples... We get to grow in that glory of God. We get to partake in a more intimate knowledge of Jesus Christ through obedience. And that personal process is worked out. It's worked out through good deeds. The moment we sit back and we say, I'm not doing it anymore. The moment we say, we don't want God's glory in our lives. But the moment we work it out. And we become Jesus' handiwork, as Ephesians 2.10 says, 
the moment God's glory is demonstrated. That handiwork is the Greek word poema. It's G4161, if you want to look it up later. It's only used two times in the Bible. We are God's handiwork, poema. That word poema, it means fabric, it means product. It's where we get the English transliteration poem. We are God's poem. Wow. You are a poem that's being written right now of God's glory. That's amazing. You are His work. In fact, as you work it out, He's working it out in you. Why? So that you receive more and more of that intimacy with Him. The more Jesus reveals His glory, the more intimacy you get with Him. As we close, I want to ask just a few pointed questions. Do you have the good news of the light of Jesus in your life? Is the light of Jesus Christ evident for all to see? If not, maybe today you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. Maybe you need to stop just talking the talk and you need to start walking the walk. Maybe Jesus is actually calling you right now to pass your light on to others so that they can see. Second question, how authentic are your relationships to others? Are you really salt, preserving relationships, or are you an imposter? Are the words of grace and truth coming from your lips? Are you salty, having authentic relationships, or... Are you one way with certain people and completely different on Sunday with your other relationships? What good deeds, what good deeds has Jesus purposed in your life to help you grow in your intimacy with Him? Are you being obedient to those good deeds? When Jesus asks you to do something, you're saying, here I am, Lord, send me. How has God revealed His glory in your life? How are you propelling the mission of the kingdom of God? Maybe a question to ask today is, who is Jesus maybe laying on your heart right now that you need to share Jesus with? Maybe today the Lord is is laying a person on your heart that you need to be light to or salt to. Maybe today is Jesus is convicting you, you know what? You need to be light. You need to actually step forward and get baptized. You need to be light to darkness. Maybe the Lord is, is convicting you, you need to join Living Grace Baptist Church. Be a part of this family. Maybe today you realize you just need to grow deeper. You need to grow deeper into the Word of God, and so you need to join one of the Bible studies that we have. And so in just a moment, whatever the Lord's laying on your heart, this is a time to listen to that still, small voice and be obedient to Him. We're going to sing a song of invitation. During this song, we're going to give you an opportunity to respond to the Holy Spirit. Maybe right now you need to take out that communication card and write down what that decision is. Maybe you need to go online, and you can... Do that right now. Go online and submit a question to pastor. You can also fill out the communication card. In just a moment, we're going to sing this song, and it's your time to be obedient to the Lord. I'm going to ask Pastor Sean to come down. He's going to assist with counseling. Maybe you need time and prayer. We'll give you the opportunity to pray with one of us if you feel led by the Holy Spirit to do that. Whatever the Lord is laying on your heart, be obedient to Him. Would you stand as I close this in prayer? Father God, Lord, we we thank you for this passage of Scripture where we get to be two things, salt and light. And Lord, I I pray for those who are making decisions right now. They're disciples of Jesus Christ, and they're saying, I need to be salt. I need to be that light. 
Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to leave this place being those things to this world. We, we pray that you'd have your way with our hearts today. Help us to be obedient to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Take up thy cross and follow me, I heard my master say. I gave my life to ransom thee, surrender your all today. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go. I'll follow my Christ who loves me so. I sought his will to know, and in that will I now abide, wherever he leads I'll go, wherever he leads I'll go, wherever he leads I'll go, I'll follow my Christ who loves me so, wherever You may be seated, and uh, as you're having a seat, I, we have a, a wonderful decision that happened this morning. Come up here, girls. This one in particular <laughs> came down with some, some support from family here. Um, Riley, you came forward. You said, what did you say? I said I want to get baptized. She wants to get baptized. <laughs> What an amazing thing. She's, I know she, she's saying, well, I want to get baptized. We're going we're gonna to meet as a family and discuss that a little bit more. I'm excited about that. Give me five. She, she said, I, she, uh, I said, well, who's Jesus? And she said, my. My Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. Isn't that awesome? From the, from the mouth of babes right there. Amen. <laughs> And so uh, in just a little bit, we're going to close. And, and so if you can encourage her uh, today, maybe you give her a high five or something as, as you leave, that would be awesome. Uh, let us, let's close in prayer. Is that okay? Let's pray. Uh, Lord, we just praise you and thank you for this uh, wonderful decision. Uh, Lord, I, I thank you for the decisions that you have, have put into our hearts today. Uh, as your children, help us to be uh, obedient to you. Help us to continue to walk in newness of life. And Lord, continue to transform our minds so that we will remain in your good, pleasing, and perfect will. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's stand up here together. May God bless you. May God keep you. Thank you.
There is one announcement I forgot. Uh, we do have sign-ups for the uh, youth, uh, for the uh, parking lot, for the um, Greeley Stampede. I had to get all my words there. Uh, so if you would like to uh, join and help the youth in that fundraising event, uh, the adult page uh, has highlighted yellow, and then the youth page is uh, with gray bars on it. Uh, so out in the foyer on the table, uh, right outside the doors there. So if you'd like to help with that, uh, it's separated by days and by uh, two-hour shifts apiece. Don't be discouraged. You can always sign up for more than one shift in a row. <laughs> 